And so, really, the question for today is hypnosis, is it real or is it a fake? Is hypnosis real? Is it a fake? Now, uh, there's two versions to this message I can give you. The first one is, yes, it's real. Stop. Done. Or let's go into a bit more detail. Is hypnosis real? Is it a fake? Right. What do you think? Comment below. Uh, comment to say whether you've had a hypnosis session before, whether you thought it was good or bad, or you've had a coaching session as well, whether how that's worked for you. Because it'd be interesting to know how other people have got on with any kind of hypnotherapy or coaching. For me, when I'm talking to clients, uh, I'll often get a few questions about what hypnosis is, what it isn't, how it affects them, how it might or might not affect them. So, really, the simplest answer is yes. It is what it is. Hypnosis is really just a way of letting you get more in touch with the thoughts that are going off in your mind, rather than using that kind of busy, busy, think, think, focus part of your mind. Since it's the little bit in the back of the brain that holds all your thoughts and your memories, your feelings about you, your thoughts about you, what you can do, what you can't do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. All that area, that area is sort of locked away, hidden. Since when you start thinking those kind of deep questions, how to use a computer, how to type, how to write, that kind of thinking stuff, that kind of deep cognitive stuff, then all those clever bits, all the thoughts and thoughts, memories, dreams and so on, you're not going to get access to them. Now, the whole thing about hypnosis, in a nutshell, is it's really just letting you find a way to walk back into the back part of your mind and explore some of those things you've been thinking about. And really, it's something you do during the day anyhow. Have you ever found yourself reading a book and that lets your mind sort of drift off somewhere else? You're sort of entering that kind of hypnotic state because you're letting your mind just lead you connect through some thoughts. What about if you're driving and you're driving on a route that you've driven 10, 20, 100 times before. Do you remember every time you move the steering wheel, look in the mirror, change the gear, stop and start at the lights, indicate, look out the window? No. You remember certain points, not everything. The phrase that's often used is that phrase of highway hypnosis. It's when someone's actually got so focused on where they're going in one direction that they always go, they don't see the truck in front of them that stopped and they could slam straight into the back of it. And in court, they'd say, I didn't even see it. Well, they sort of hypnotized themselves in their own way to not see it. So really, that thing about his hope knows is it real or is it a fake? Firstly, if you think it's a fake, okay, I've worked with clients who didn't believe in hypnosis. They didn't believe that sort of voodoo witch doctor stuff. Well, that's okay. So what we did was something else that wasn't hypnosis. Um, I've also spoken to people that don't like working with their eyes closed. The idea of closing their eyes ooh, freaks them out. That's okay. Because some people think that hypnosis means having your eyes closed. And it only works with having your eyes closed. No. Hypnosis works, eyes open, very much, since it's really just a way of getting those thoughts shaken up and looked at. So if you are thinking of using, um, what about sportsmen? Thinking about sports people. Many a successful sports person, be it a golfer, a cricketer, a runner, a tennis player, They've got their own particular and specific routines they follow, and they have developed a pattern that they use, that they use every time. It's a routine they've got into, they've learned, and they've honed it and shaped it and built it so that it helps them to become successful. And funnily enough, if they don't follow that route exactly, they might miss the shot, miss the parts, not return the servers well, not various ways go wrong. 
So they've actually set a certain pattern. They've self-hypnotized themselves, the way I phrase it. Someone might use another name. Some other person that's coached them in sport might use some other message. But really, it's, it's hypnosis. So that's another example of where hypnosis exists, although it could be called something else. What other areas might someone use hypnosis? Say you wake up in the morning, you wake up late, get out of bed, you bash your foot on the bed, you come downstairs, you find that the fridge is out of milk, and you're cursing. Bloody thing's gone wrong. Look at this day. Look what's gone wrong. Da, 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 da. And then funnily enough, because that first couple of things have gone wrong, bashed your foot, run out of milk, can't find a shirt or a blouse, you're running late, assuming we're not in lockdown, obviously, you're going back to your office, getting on the train, Delay here, delay there. All these things. Oh, this thing's gone very wrong. That thing's gone wrong. Look at my day. And funnily enough, the more you notice the things that have gone wrong, the more you notice the other things that have gone wrong. You are, in effect, hypnotizing yourself to see the problems. Looking at it the other way. An example, a classic example, a positive example of seeking your find. Someone buys a new car. They've been looking for this particular car for a long time. They buy this new particular red car, red Toyota, a green Hyundai, a blue Volvo, whatever it is. They want to stand out from the crowd and be different because they haven't seen them on the roads at all. And then when they buy the car, they take possession, they've got their bums on the seat, they're driving along. Oh, look, in the mirror, one of my cars driving along at the junction. Oh, look, pulling out one of my cars driving along at the junction. Later on, they see one in the petrol station. Beforehand, they'd set their mind up in a way of seeing no examples of what they had in their mind as their future car. But when they've actually gone ahead, pulled the trigger, got the car they want or a piece of clothing they wanted, a particular piece of fashion clothing, for example, then they start seeing here, there, everywhere examples of what they've got now for some people that could be a positive a bit of a pat on the back yes great i've made a good decision look at the other people that have made a similar decision just like me part of the in crowd we're all thinking good that's sort of like positive hypnosis should we call it however some people might the other way oh bloody old they go just gone and bought this car, I've got the finance on it, I've got this car for four years, I wanted to stand out from the crowd and be different. Look, he's got one, she's got one, I, I don't even know why I bothered. They're hypnotizing themselves to reference that example or those examples in a negative way. So that's another example of general hypnosis. Now, if you Go on Google or read a book, you'll find there are levels of states of hypnosis and there's levels of states of trance. And really, for the purpose of this conversation, that doesn't matter. The simple way I express it is hypnosis is just a way of letting you allow your thoughts to sort of become connected. Because you're doing that kind of connection all the time. Those examples I've given you, and there's hundreds of other kind of day-to-day -day hypnosis examples. It's really just a way of letting you get hold of your thoughts and sometimes get a hold of them a bit shaken by the throat and say, I want this to change. Other times you might get a hold of that thought, give it a hug and say, thank you. That thought I've got is really helping me. It's making me feel good about myself. It's making me feel good about the opportunities for the future. Since the whole thing about hypnosis is it's really just a way of letting you sort of guide yourself better. Most clients I work with, I'm probably the first hypnotist they've worked with in that they've not gone and seen a previous hypnotist, then another one, then another one. So they always come with preconceived ideas of what hypnosis is or it isn't. And so my message to them would be, you've been doing this already for years, possibly decades even. So what we're going to do when we work together is take a skill that you've been using, perhaps piecemeal, perhaps a bit raggedy, perhaps a little bit rough at the edges, and hone it and make it focused and tight 
so that you get the results you want. And those kind of examples could be rather than shooting yourself in the foot and feeling self-sabotaging yourself or feeling like you're an imposter, to actually feel confident about the results you've already created and then use that perhaps as a springboard to move on further. Now, if you are already doing that to yourself, it can't be a fake thing. It's just natural. It's rather like a fish doesn't know there's a thing called water because it's around them. You and I, we live in, a, in air, air around us. If we lived in a vacuum, well, we'd be dead. It's there. We're breathing air all the time. So we can't really see it. It's there. And hypnosis is just like that, really. It's a state of mind that can happen in an instant. Just the act of allowing your mind to drift about a thought in the past or the future or thinking about something. And even perhaps whilst you're listening to me, your mind might go off at a tangent. If I were to say to you something like, childhood, or perhaps business meeting, or perhaps sales meeting, sales pressure or something. Certain words might have a particular meaning for you stronger than somebody else. And for them, they might think, oh yeah, childhood did it. Okay. Someone else might go, oh, it's bloody annoying that. Once we got moved all over the place, my family, dad was in the military, we went here and there. And their brain's going, going to certain places. And on those little places in their mind, there might be little stories connected, little stories that would like to pop up in their mind to be explored. And that's sort of what hypnosis does. It's really just allowing you to look at thoughts, look at patterns in your mind and see how they're helping you or how they're hindering you. It's real. It's a natural process, a natural state. And when you talk to a hypnotist or a coach and they're using sort of hypnotic language, it's nothing like stage hypnosis. That's different. Hypnosis is really like, really, it's just natural. It's like being able to go into a room that when you go into the room, you find it's got doors. And those doors are connected to doorways. And those doorways are connected to corridors. And those corridors are connected to more corridors. And some might be carpeted, some might have high ceilings, some might have low ceilings, some might have uplighters, downlighters, some may have music, some may have different experiences, some may have different textures and fragrances and smells. And they're all going off in different pathways. And what's beautiful about that type of pathway is that you can't get it wrong. Wherever you go is the right place to go. And in those little pathways and doorways and corridors, you can find thoughts, sometimes thoughts you've not noticed for quite a while. It can pop up and be quite surprisingly useful or sometimes surprisingly shocking and go, bloody hell, I didn't realise that was affecting me. And then what you can do is deal with it and then shut the door and move on. And shutting the door isn't like an avoidance. It's a saying, job done. So hypnosis is real or hypnosis is a fake. Your choice Whichever you see is the right way for you. You can't get it wrong. So comment below or on the rerun on the YouTube channel. Comment. Have you ever experienced hypnosis? How was it for you? Have you ever spoken to someone who's found hypnosis has helped them? How was it for them? If you've experienced it and you didn't like it, that's okay. Comment. Tell me. If you've experienced it and you've thought, hmm, next time, I prefer it if it was X not Y or this not that. Comment, tell me. It'd be interesting because there's, a, there's as many ways of experiencing hypnosis as there are people on the planet. Everyone's got their own different way. And even more so, you, if you experienced it, say, five times, it could be just that little bit different. Time one, time two, time three, time four, time five. So what's beautiful about it is it is changeable. It is there, it's as natural as the air. And it's just really a way of letting you find out how you can become an even better person at being the best you can be. Since taking the scenario of someone that's going through all those different corridors in their mind, you think about, say, a tube man. 
where there's all the different connections. Someone that uses that tube quite a lot might know I'm going to go on a different route when the, tra when the trains are delayed. Whereas someone who doesn't just sits there and waits and takes the long journey. Hypnosis is a way of sometimes allowing you to shortcut a journey, find a secret passage, find a, a secret route that only you can have for the benefits of you. So if you'd like to find out more about hypnosis, you want to learn self-hypnosis even for yourself. That's a great thing to do. Have a look on YouTube. You'll find some great tapes and tracks. I've got some bits I could send you. But certainly on YouTube, there's thousands of tracks on self-hypnosis. And um, so comment. Have you used a self-hypnosis tape? Have you found it beneficial? Have you found that when you used it, it didn't really work in the long term? Or did you find that you used it once or twice and it changed your life? I'd love to know. So, yes, my name's Charles Stevenson. I'm a hypnotherapist and a coach. I use hypnosis and coaching and language and words pictures and images and thoughts to help my clients change their lives in ways that are sometimes unimaginable and after becoming unimaginable i can't even say that after they were originally unimaginable and then just became natural if you'd like to find out more comment below happy to have a chat with you but at the least subscribe to my channel uh, Forward this to someone else if they're thinking about hypnosis and they're on the fence because whoever they work with, they need to know hypnosis is natural. You can't get stuck, it's safe, and you can't get it wrong. Anything else from that's a bonus. You can't get stuck, it's safe, and you can't get it wrong. It's natural too. Charles Stevenson, happy to help. Take this now.